Joan is 13 when Saint Margaret, Catherine and Michel appear, ordering her to free France from the invaders and to lead the Dauphin to the throne. These are the parents of Joan, played by Jeanne d'Alcy and Georges Méliès. They are a poor family and they love their daughter with all their hearts. And there she is. There is her uncle as well, also played by Georges Méliès, who asks her not to abandon her family and to stay in the village. Torn between family and destiny, Joan is called away by the voices that guide her and decides to leave and fight for her country. At the gate of the fortified city of Vaucouleurs, there is a soldier on guard. He wears helmet, halberd, and colored tights. Joan begs him to admit her as she wants to explain her purpose to the master of the castle and ask for his help. In the castle, Lord Robert de Baudicourt, also played by Georges Méliès, leads a frivolous life. Joan enters and tries to convince him of the importance of her plan. He is incredulous at first and invites her to join his festivities. But this is no time to revel as we must quickly take up our weapon to defend the country. Convinced, Baudicourt gives his sword to Joan and entrusts her with an army. Orléans is freed from the English. The glorious march can start with bravos. Joan is now dressed as a soldier on her armored horse. And here comes the endless march with Virgin Joan now leading a huge army. As a matter of fact, this superfilm production was unable to afford many extras, so it is always the same actors and extras that walk behind the set and before our eyes, and again, and again, and again, and again, and always. 
On July 17, 1429, in the Cathedral of Reims, King Charles VII is declared sacred by the Archbishop Renaud of Chartres. Thanks to the inspiration of Joan, then aged 17, he gradually frees the north of France, occupied by the English. We are in front of the castle of Compiègne. There is Joan of Arc, now chief of the army, who commands the attack. Under her command, they start to demolish the fence. One enemy soldier grabs Joan and carries her to the castle. The battle continues. We must liberate Joan! Six of her faithful soldiers, one of them played by Georges Méliès, of course, attempt an attack. They plant ladders in the trench along the castle walls. There are gunshots from every direction, but the soldiers continue to fight despite the shooting and the projectiles that fall everywhere. Joan, prisoner, is thrown in the tower of the castle of Philippe Auguste, where she is chained. Exhausted, she falls asleep. In her dreams, Saint Michel appears to her one last time to remind her of her promises and her destiny. Then, two saints come to light up the dreams of the Virgin Joan. When Joan is awakened, her jailers come in and order her to follow them. We are in the hall of the castle. In the center of the scene, the executioner stands beside the blaze. On the left sits Bishop Cochon and his associates, a priest and two penitent monks behind the judges. Cochon reads the charges to Joan. Joan is a good Christian, but she's accused of having dressed as a man, leaving her parents without their permission and following God's judgment instead of the churches. The voices that guided her were inspired by the devil. Joan is defending herself, so Cochon orders her to sign a retraction, 
Joan refuses, throws the quill on the floor, and calls to the heavens that have always guided her towards truth and justice. On the love or the hate that God has for the English, I do not know, but I am convinced that they will be expelled from France except for those that die on this ground, said Joan of Arc during her trial, March 15, 1431. At the market square in Rouen, the pyre is set. On the stake, the words, relapsed heretic. Cochon will take his seat on the stand on the right of the scene. Joan walks toward her torture. She climbs up the pyre and is tied to the posts. For reasons of medieval copyright, we can also see a little sign indicating Georges Méliès' Paris at the bottom right of the image. As the first flames raise, a priest arrives and gives Joan a cross to kiss, a sign of redemption. Finally, a man, again played by Georges Méliès, adds fuel to the pyre, then falls, poisoned by the smoke. The shocked soldier point out to the sky and remorsefully shout, we have burnt a saint. Joan's arrival into heaven. Joan the sacred comes out of the wooden floor of the studio opening her arms as a sign of blessing. 